Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, millimeter wave applications benefit from the use of thin laminates and prepregs. Learn how. Now, here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, my name is John Coonrod with Rogers Corporation. I am a technical marketing manager, and today I'm going to talk to you about thin materials used at millimeter wave, thin laminates, and thin prepregs. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware, there's been more and more millimeter wave applications come to the market just about every day, and uh, that's going to continue, I'm sure. Uh, the uh, frequencies that are being used right now most commonly are about 39 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz, 77, and 79, uh, but that most certainly will change over time. Now, millimeter wave is defined as a frequency range from about 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. And the key thing with millimeter wave is that it has a short wavelength. So basically, as I'm sure you're aware, when you get to higher frequencies, the wavelength gets smaller and smaller. And a very small wave is going to be very sensitive to things on a circuit board that a longer wave would not. And that's one of the big issues. Uh, what I've decided to do, though, is give you a list of issues to think about for millimeter wave applications and how these thin materials can benefit. Here is a list of different topics to consider for millimeter wave design and also for troubleshooting and performance in general. Now, the top of the list is small wavelengths. Uh, as I said, that's very important. And just intuitively to think about this, if you had a circuit that was running at 2 gigahertz, which has a long wavelength, and that circuit has a little anomaly, like maybe a little etching anomaly, uh, at 2 gigahertz, that little etching anomaly will not really affect that long wave, or if it does, it's just going to be a very small portion of it. However, at 77 gigahertz, when the wave is much, much smaller, uh, 20 thousandths or so, uh, then that little anomaly is a good portion of that wave, and that wave is going to be corrupted because of the anomaly. So an anomaly at millimeter wave may not be an anomaly at lower frequencies. So small wavelengths is a very key thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with millimeter wave in general. Now, once you get to these higher frequencies, getting good return loss is really much more difficult to do. And uh, having poor return loss is going to cause problems with insertion loss, uh, noise in the insertion loss curve, quality of it, and things like that. Also, poor res return loss will cause phase response issues as well. So normally you want to have a good return loss, and good is about 15 dB or better up to about 50 or 60 gigahertz. And then beyond that, usually about 12 dB or better is considered good for return loss. Radiation loss is not that much of an issue at lower frequency, but at higher frequencies, that gets to be more and more of an issue. And what that is is radiated energy coming off the circuit itself, and that radiated energy has to go somewhere, so it can corrupt other nearby circuitry with EMI. EMI is electromagnetic interference. So radiation loss is actually, uh, can be two different problems. One is that you're losing energy that's being radiated off. And then two is you're causing some corruption, possibly, of other systems nearby due to EMI. And then also at millimeter wave, signal launch or any kind of signal transition is very difficult to achieve a good match. And again, that has to do with the very small wave that are propagating in these circuits. So signal launch is the transition from the connector to the circuit. And then on the circuit itself, you sometimes have impedance transitions, things like that. And uh, being able to get a good match with these transitions is much more difficult at high frequencies with short wavelengths than at low frequencies with long wavelengths. And then thin materials. Thin materials are used for several different reasons in millimeter wave, uh, but you do have different things to think about. So for thin materials, there is a fabrication side of the, of the concern here, and that is thinner materials are a little more problematic when building a circuit. Just because they are thin, you have more damage with handling. So the handling of these uh, materials during circuit fabrication is more important. And also the scale factor. The scale factor is how much the material will grow or shrink going through different processes in circuit fabrication, and a thinner material will have an increased uh, scale factor. And also uh, circuits that are based on thin materials are more sensitive to the conductor effects such as copper surface roughness. And then lastly, unwanted resonances and uh, spurious modes can be an issue as well. And uh, these are all the things that should be considered by the RF designer when considering a millimeter wave design. 
So thinner materials are used at millimeter wave frequencies very specifically uh, for minimizing or eliminating unwanted uh, resonances or spurious modes. So there's several things to think about for these, um, these unwanted uh, resonances. And I've uh, made a very simple drawing that kind of describes this. So let's take a look at that now. So here I'm showing a cross-sectional view, top and bottom, of a microstrip transmission line circuit. The top view is showing what happens when you have uh, an operating frequency at the right wavelength to have a wavelength between the signal plane and the ground plane. And that full wavelength, or even a half wavelength, and even a quarter wavelength can cause a resonance between the signal plane and the ground plane. That resonance is going to generate its own wave and interfere with the wave that you do want. So that thickness will make a difference. The thickness between the signal plane and the ground plane will make a difference in that frequency where the resonate, resonance happens at. And if you make that a much smaller number, as in a thinner laminate, now you have to get to much higher frequencies before that resonance happens. So thinner laminates are usually used at millimeter wave to uh, make sure you don't have these unwanted resonances that can corrupt the signal you do want. Now the bottom picture is also a resonance and it's a little different. Now instead of the resonance due to the substrate thickness, it's due to the conductor width and it's a left to right edge uh, bouncing standing wave basically that causes resonance and that energy will corrupt the energy that you do want to propagate. So there's two different resonances of concern here that you want to avoid. And as a general statement, the W dimension there needs to be uh, one eighth wavelength or smaller. One tenth would be very so safe. One eighth wavelength is pretty safe as well. But again, when these numbers are around a quarter wavelength or half wavelength, you're going to have some resonances that will disturb and corrupt the signal that you do want. As I mentioned, having thin laminates for millimeter wave is very important to eliminate these uh, problematic uh, resonances. Uh, there's also some other things to consider with these thin laminates. And one is as the laminate is thinner, basically the signal plane is closer to the ground plane, now the copper surface roughness, which is at the substrate copper interface, becomes more significant. And a rougher copper will slow the wave and it will also cause more insertion loss, increased conductor loss. And the slower wave is perceived as a higher dielectric constant. So a thinner laminate is going to be more sensitive to the copper surface roughness than a thicker laminate for millimeter wave performance. Now another issue is thin laminates uh, also will use normally just one layer of glass reinforcement if the laminate is glass reinforced. And one layer of glass reinforcement if it's open weave is going to be a worst case scenario for having problems with the glass weave effect at millimeter wave frequencies. So it's best to use spread weave for the glass layer on a thin material. The spread weave acts more like a uniform uh, plane and then you don't have these anomalies of the open weave and you don't have the glass weave effect. And then finally, uh, there's normal variations in circuit fabrication, of course, like etching and uh, copper plating thickness. And as the circuit is thinner, the conductor width is typically more narrow to account for the, the thin substrate and get the correct impedance. Uh, but that means the conductor width now might be 6 mils, whereas if you have a thicker circuit, it could be 20 mils. And if the circuit fabricator holds the same tolerance of plus or minus a mil for the resolution of that conductor, for a 20 mil wide conductor, plus or minus a half mil or a one mil is really not a problem. But for a five or six mil conductor that's used a millimeter wave, the plus or minus one mil or half mil, that certainly can be a problem. Uh, so you will see a difference there for variability just due to normal uh, circuit etching. Shown here are two tables of information that are showing the non-woven glass materials that Rogers offers and is being used at millimeter wave frequencies right now and I'm sure in the future. The first one is the RL3003 laminate, and that's been used a lot for automotive radar at 77 gigahertz, and still is today. And you can see it's available in thicknesses of 5 mil and 10 mil. Dielectric constant is 3. Dissipation factor is extremely low at 0 0.001. And the copper surface roughness for the ED copper that is standard with this material is 2 microns RMS, and that's relatively rough. Now the RL3003G2 is a material that we introduced just a few years ago and it really comes from us going through a learning curve of the RL3003 being used at millimeter wave frequencies and the RL3003G2 material is the optimized version of the RL3003 specifically 
for millimeter wave. And the RL3003 G2 material is available at 5 and 10 mil thicknesses. DK 3.0 dissipation factor, again, very low at 0 0.0011. And the copper that's used here is a very low profile copper and it has a surface roughness of 0.6 microns RMS. And that's considered quite smooth actually. Uh, and now the bottom table is prepreg. The prepreg that I'm showing here is actually a bond ply and that is 2929. And the thicknesses available are a 1.5 mil, 2 mil, and 3 mil DK 2.9, DF 3.0. So the DK is pretty closely matched to the laminates and the DF is a little bit higher. And uh, this higher DF uh, can come into play depending on how the circuit design is uh, made. And in other cases, it may not be that significant, but it's something to consider. Now, this material is unsupported. All the materials on this picture are unsupported. In other words, they have no glass fabric. And that means you will not have a glass weave effect and no concern there at all. Now, if the next picture I want to talk about are going to be thin materials that have glass reinforcement. The information shown here is very similar to the information I just shown, and this is different because it's still the thin materials, uh, prepreg and laminates, except in this case, these materials are all woven glass. So they do have a woven glass layer. Now the first row of uh, information here is the RO4830 laminate, comes in 5 mil, 9.5 mil, DK 3.24, DF 0.0033. Copper surface roughness is pretty smooth at 0.8. I guess just to give you a, a good guideline, a very smooth copper is rolled copper at 0.4. So 0.8 is rougher than that, but a copper that's much rougher, as I mentioned before, 2.0 microns, that's considered pretty rough. So it just kind of gives you a little bit of a, a gradient to think about. Now the material second row, RO4835T, that is also available in multiple thicknesses that are thin, 2.5 mil, 3 mil, 4 mil, and 5 mil. DK 3.3 and the dissipation factor of 0 0.0035. All these numbers are when tested at 10 gigahertz. Copper surface roughness 0 0.6, that's considered quite smooth. And then the uh, bottom row of the top table is the CLTE MW. And that material is specially formulated specifically for millimeter wave. And you can see there's many different thicknesses here to choose from. Uh, all of them being thin materials, 3 mil, 4 mil, all the way up to 10 mil, DK 3.0, DF 0 0.0015, which is considered very low. And then there's three different coppers that are offered with this laminate. Uh, ED copper that has a roughness of 2 microns RMS, a very low profile of 0.6 microns RMS, and a rolled copper, the smoothest, about 0.4 microns RMS. Now, the bottom table is prepreg, and that's the Speedway 300P. And here you can see there's many choices of uh, materials for thicknesses, all being pretty thin, 2 mil, 2.5 mil, 3 mil, all the way up to 5.5 mil, DK 2.9, dissipation factor 0 0.003. In this case, the dissipation factor is a worst case scenario. And if you look at our data sheet, you will find that uh, most of the dissipation factor of the different choices of material are around 0 0.0026 up to 0 0.003. Now, the choice of speed wave prepreg, uh, there are choices of different glass styles. Some glass are open weave and some are closed weave or spread weave. Now, the spread weave glass is actually what you're interested in at millimeter wave because it acts more like a plane of glass and then you don't have those openings that can disturb the wave uh, due to these isolated DK differences known as the glass weave effect. Bottom row is 4450T prepreg. It's also offered in many different thicknesses that are thin. 2.5 mil, 3 mil, all the way up to 6 mil. DK 3.3, dissipation factor 0 0.004. Now, the choice of materials here, being glass reinforced, are normally used when you have multi layers of RF layers. Whereas the previous picture, where I was talking about materials that did not have glass reinforcement, those are normally used at the surface of the, uh, of the circuit itself. So, copper layer one and two. Uh, that's usually what's used is uh, unsupported, and sometimes those unsupported materials are used in uh, RF layers that are buried. But the safer choice is the uh, materials that we're looking at here that are glass reinforced. So when you have a multi-layer with RF layers inside, then you do want to have glass reinforcement to help with uh, the fabrication issues and scaling and registration from layer to layer and a variety of things like that. 
The choice of thin materials, laminate and prepregs for millimeter wave is necessary and that's really due to minimizing unwanted uh, spurious modes and unwanted resonances, things like that. Uh, and Rogers obviously has several different offerings, some that are unsupported of glass uh, fabric and some that have supported uh, laminates with glass fabric. And uh, both of them, both different types of materials can be used and are used at millimeter wave and have very good performance. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.